This occurring challenge is called cut the sticks. In this challenge, we are going to receive an array, and that array is going to contain integers. These integers are going to correspond to the length of some sticks. So what we have to do is have a loop, and then at every iteration inside our loop, we need to determine the length of the shortest stick and cut that length from the longer sticks in the array. And we're going to repeat these steps until all the sticks have the same length. So in many cases, this can mean repeating this process until we no longer have any positive value inside our array. The goal of this challenge is to print the number of sticks that have a length above zero. So that is what they're saying here, but I'm just explaining that to you differently. So to make this even clearer, I have this notepad. So this is the array. We have three items because there are three values in the array and we need to print three. We are going to deduct one here from our array. Now the question is, how do we know that we need to deduct one? The answer is pretty simple. One here is the minimum value inside this array. So like they said in the challenge, we need to determine the length of the smallest stick, which is one here, and cut that length from all the remaining sticks. So in other words, we need to take that value, which is the minimum at the beginning, and deduct it from all the other integers inside our array. So we deduct one from one and we get zero. So the first stick is gone because it's been cut off. Then we take one and we deduct it from two. So we get one here at the next iteration. And then we deduct one from three and we get two at the next iteration. So this is what our array is going to look like. You can leave it like this, zero, one, two, or to avoid any confusion, I could also make it like this, meaning that these are now the only sticks remaining inside the array. But I think having it as zero like this is a bit more logical. If you're wondering why the number here is two, and we have to print the number two here is because we have two sticks left inside the array. And how do we know that we have two sticks? Well, we have two positive values here. If we have zero, it means that that stick is gone. So we have only two sticks left and therefore we print two. Now, what is the minimum value inside this array here? It's now one. We're talking about minimum positive value. If the value is zero, it means there is no stick. Perhaps it's even better that I remove this zero here. And now we can ask, what is the minimum value here? The minimum value is one. So if I deduct one from one, at my next iteration, my array is going to look like this here. One becomes zero, and then two becomes one because I deduct one from two. So now I can in fact remove this here, remove the zero because now that stick is gone. And I'll be left with only one item inside my array. Or you can also say only one stick. So because we have only one item, I can print one on the screen. Now, what is the minimum value inside this array? We only have a single value, so it's automatically the minimum value. If I deduct one from one, at the next iteration, my array is going to look like this. I deduct one from one and I get zero. At that point, there is no stick left. There is no positive value, so we know that we have no stick left. At that point, we are done. Let's jump into the code here. This is my solution in C++. And we need to return a vector of integers inside that function. So at the end, when we are done processing everything, we need to return a vector of integers. The parameter here is also a vector of integers and it's called R. So R here is going to correspond to an array like this, one, two, and three. And one, two, and three here corresponding to three sticks of different lengths. Notice here that the array was already sorted. We had one, then two, and then three. So it's sorted in ascending order. That's why it was easy for us to find the minimum and then deduct it because the minimum was always at the beginning of our array. Because we don't have any guarantee that this vector is going to be sorted, my first step to solve this challenge is to sort the array first. So R here again is this parameter, this array of sticks, and I'm sorting it from the beginning to the end. Then I want to find what is the shortest stick or the minimum value. So here I'm creating this integer here. It's a variable. I'm calling it shortest. And at first I'm setting it to this int min value. If you're wondering what is int min, well, it's a constant available in C++ and it corresponds to the minimum value for a variable of type int. So this in fact is the actual value, um, negative 2 billion something. So at first, this is the value of our shortest variable because we don't know yet what is the minimum value inside the array. Now the next step is to create a vector of integers and it's called ants. Ants here stands for answer, answer as in solution. So this is the vector that I intend to return. And right after that, I have this for loop here. So this loop here is meant to run from the beginning of the array up until the end. 
Now, notice that I've removed all the text that I had below this line. And the reason is what I just explained at the beginning of this video is not exactly how the program is going to work. So let me explain what this code does. When i equals zero inside of our loop, this is the value that I'm going to access. So at first, we know that shortest equals this value here, which is negative 2 billion something. And when I check for this condition here, this is going to evaluate to true because the elements at index i inside my array, which is one, is greater than my shortest value here. So shortest here is less than one. When I perform this operation here, array.size minus one, what I'm doing is in fact three minus zero. So this is going to push three inside my vector. Now at the second iteration, i is going to equal one and shortest is going to be equal to one because here we are assigning the value of this to shortest. So at the next iteration, when i equals one, the value that we are accessing is two. So at that point, when we check for this, this will evaluate to true again because two is greater than one. So once again, we will do array.size, which is three because we have three items, minus i, i equals one. So array.size minus i is equal to saying three minus one. So this will give us two. So we're going to have two items. We'll then update the value of shortest and increase the count for i. So when i equals two, this is the value that we're accessing. We are going to check one more time for this. This will evaluate to true because three is greater than two. And so when we perform this here, array.size minus i, we will be doing three minus two. So this will give us one. We'll push it to our vector and update the value of shortest to three. So at that point, what we'll print on the screen is three, two, and then one. Although this is what I explained at the beginning, you can always go back to the instructions here and they are using the same array, one, two, three. And you can see that what we need to push inside of our vector, the values that we need to add to our vector are also three, two, and then one. So that's what I just explained here. And now I'm just going to run this code because uh, when we are done, we need to return it, right? This is our vector. So when we are done returning it, we can use that code inside the main function. So anyway, let me run this logic here. We just passed the two sample test cases. I can submit. And we've also passed all the test cases. So that's it guys for this solution, this Akarang challenge. If you liked my video and my solution, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.